Welcome back. We now shift gears to what played out at the headquarters of the Nigerian Labour Congress in Abuja, uh, where we understand from the statement of the union or the Congress that security operatives, they mentioned the police and the people they suspect to be the DSS invading their premises and did uh, some raid, cutting away books and a couple of things, and even mentioned the fact that they were looking for seditious materials uh, in re relation to the end bad governance process. So that is a side of the labor union. But the DSS has come out to say we were not part of that raid. The police, to the best of our knowledge, hasn't spoken yet. So we have joining us on the program, the head international relations, Nigeria Labor Congress, Comrade Uche Naikwe, joins us from Abuja studio. Comrade Uche, good to see you again, sir. Yeah, good morning. All right, uh, walk us through, uh, for the benefit of everyone, what exactly happened? Because we've seen the statement, and maybe not everyone has been able to read that statement, perhaps just seeing the headlines. What played out by 8.30 on uh, that particular day? Yeah, if you remember that particular day, we had our National Executive Council meeting, which was an emergency one uh, via Zoom. Uh, that meeting reviewed the protests going on and we paid particular attention about harassment of, of course, workers, because the journalists that are harassed are workers and members of our organization, uh, killings of citizens by shooting off live ammunition bullets uh, we reviewed arrest and detentions that are lasting more than 24 hours so we did all that review and uh, made calls that uh, a decent approach to protest must be carried out and that the uh, president, we repeated our call, should, the system should dialogue with the leaders of the protest and that protesters should be treated with dignity. So we issued that statement, we finished the meeting, we left the office only to get distress call from our security officer about 8.39 that the security operatives came to the 10th floor. The labor house had 10, up to 10 to 11, 12 floors, and they picked him up and they took him to a, a particular office. Bear in mind, the 10th floor is the office of the president, where the president and general secretary stays. And uh, the doors were already locked because everybody have gone home. Then they commandeered the uh, security uh, on duty to the second floor and asked him to open some doors. And uh, of course, he didn't have the key to those doors. And they broke open the doors, took away books and all that. And uh, that's what happened. And uh, for us, we're finding it difficult to understand what's going on. Uh, the denial of the DSS and no statement from the police makes it even more ridiculous that now, if the NLC secretariat could be so discreted and harassment method on it, and nobody owns up that it was security agents, and nobody knows those who did it. Right. Uh, Comrade Ekwe, it's, it's quite curious, uh, really. If they cut away books, you wonder, are they trying to build a library or they're trying to start a book club? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's really curious. So when you say that, well, the denial from the DSS and uh, lack of statement from police even uh, is more curious, what have you found out? about these men? Uh, have you been able to pin them to a certain security agency? Are they 
Could they be non-state actors? What exactly do you know from the questions you've asked around? Yeah, the security is there. Apart from the particular security of the NLC, the other security people in the compound, those outside who are not right inside the office, all knew that they were police and DSS people. They saw them. There are many security people in the compound that night. Over uh, uh, seven of them to ten cannot be unable to identify police and security ag uh, agents. Uh, they, they saw them, they know them, they came with vehicles, they drove out, but of course they couldn't know the numbers and all those, but they know they are police. In fact, I'm sure they couldn't imagine uh, that there will be uh, denials. But even if they do, what could they do? Could they arrest the official security system? On our own part, because we don't know what has happened there, we've not gone to our office because we don't know whether things have been planted against us. We don't know what is up there. We are not working from our office. We have stayed out of the office because we can't understand that. This is a system that knows that if we are going to do anything, we make our statement public. We issue statements. We give government notice in writing. We are not individuals. We are not faceless people. Our positions are known. We write each time we want to do every document we have written vis-a-vis -vis government policy, we give to the government themselves, officially. So we don't keep... If it is when we are going to do bulletins, we share it on the road. If we are going to do hand deals, we share it. We don't hide our position on any matter. All right. All right, Mr. Akwe. Um, so a few more questions. Is the, the, the building, the labor house, the, the, do you guys have uh, CCTV? Yeah, well, uh, you can know that we are not that uh, very worthy organization that can maintain such expensive things. Uh, the CCTV at times works, at times it doesn't work because we don't have the fund to maintain such uh, things and uh, we're we're normal people, yeah, so Ms. it doesn't really matter to us. Yeah, Mr. Ekwe, now that this has happened, I think it's now imperative that the budgeting system of the labor has to factor this in because that is one of the strongest evidence to prov provide, uh, maybe in court, if anybody is denying involvement or otherwise. But to follow up on that, have you reached out? Is the place, uh, the office, for instance, uh, are there security agencies there? Uh, have you approached the police to find out their position? Because the DSS has come out to say we we're, not, we're not the ones, the men you say we that came, that were wearing t shirt they are not our guys. Uh, the police hasn't said anything. Have you approached the police? Well, we issued our statement. We have written the system to say our office was invaded. That's the best we can do. No, I'm talking like about... I told you, okay. we have not even assessed the office. As I said, we've not even assessed the office because we have to stay away. We don't know the intention why somebody should come to office by 8.30. No office works by that time. Even if you have a suspicion of any documentation in the office, you come when we're there. We're there. We're always there. Why come in the night? And let's take it. So up to now, the Nigerian Labor Congress is not enough an organization that the security system should go all out and find what happened in that place. Is that what the system is telling us? Well, comrade, so let's dive deeper or at least dig deeper if we can. So it's also been said by the statement that they were looking for uh, seditious materials, possible seditious materials in relation uh, to the end bad governance protest. Uh, has the NLC been involved in any way with this end bad governance protest? Uh, why will these men, 
I don't know if to call them unknown men now, or at least, as you said, police and possibly the DSS. Why would they be looking for seditious materials uh, at the NLC headquarters if you weren't a part of the protests? Or were you? Yeah, well, uh, thank you. I mean, in our position, is very clear on the, this thing. We wrote government formally. We issue statement. If we're part of the protest, we'll make it open. We don't hide when we are doing protests. And when we held meeting on that same day, we reviewed the protest. It's a meeting of our National Executive Council, all the state councils. We reviewed it. And we made a public, a formal communique on our position on it. If we were to be part of the protest, it would be known. We'll make it clear. We're not part of the protest. But we are saying Nigerians have the right to protest. We have even done protests on the same matter, if you remember, in the past. Or on the cost of living, stopping hunger. We have raised issues. Of course, most of the issues the people are raising, we've done our own in, the, in over 20 years. We've warned about the danger of the regulation without local production. We've done all those. So for us, we are just sitting down there watching for the first time. Uh, and all right, Mr. Right, just, is, just maybe in one minute, uh, what do you suspect? Because I'm sure your intelligence team, I know you're not law enforcement, you're labor union, but so many things will be going through the mind of the leaders, whether you're now working from home mandatorily now because of your concern for your own safety. What do you think is going on? Yeah, honestly, we find it difficult to phantom what is going on. We, we don't want to think, is there people trying to possibly attack labor leaders? Are there some segments of the system who, because if we are even, it becomes even more dangerous that if unknown government will start operating in the central area of Abuja without security people identifying them, and why the choice of Nigerian Labor Congress as a place to operate, those are the things that is going through our mind. Who wants to attack the Nigerian Labor Congress? Let's say it's not the government. Why can't the government the security system of the country defend an organization like the Nigerian Labor Congress. Those are questions going in our mind. Okay. Uh, definitely we will need answers to those questions. We're hopeful that uh, uh, this is almost uh, over 24 hours after that incident. The police hasn't spoken. Well, we will we, we'll stay hopeful to hear what the at least let the police come and defend themselves. The DSS has defended, it's denied it. Uh, we've not heard from the police. So we are hopeful that the police will speak on this particular issue. We must thank you. Uh, Comrade Uche, Uche Na Ekwe, Head International Relations, the Nigerian Labor Congress, and stay safe out there. Thank you, sir, for coming on the program. Thank you very much. I will take a quick break, and we will come back to the softer side of things. And this time, we're going to Port Harcourt uh, to talk to the guy that calls himself the mayor of Pitakwa, Keo Baba, joins us next after this break. Join us again.